Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to show you how to fix or overcome a bug that's found in Unity when dealing with main assets and sub assets and renaming them. Um, so here's an example. Whenever you have a main asset like this achievement database and it has a couple of scriptable objects that are sub assets, if you rename the main asset to anything that's larger or alphabetically uh, below than the sub assets the order gets messed up and uh, as you can see here I renamed it and now it just renamed the first sub asset and the main asset got moved to the bottom of the list uh, Unity is aware of this bug it's been tracked but they've postponed it because they said it requires a large system rewrite um, and they're tracking this issue internally so for the time being I'm going to show you how to get around that. So we're going to delete this and uh, we're going to write a editor script so you might want to create an editor folder and inside here I'm going to create a new script called achievement database modification process or it's a mouthful but as you can see I already have a example here from our previous runs but let's ignore that so here we have this class that we just created. This class is actually going to derive from another Unity class called Asset Modification Processor. And what this do allows us to do is whenever an asset is modified in the editor, or well, one of these callbacks get triggered, and uh, the one we're interested in is this on will move asset. And it's because Unity, whenever it does renaming, it basically internally just moves the asset from one directory to the other. Even though the directory is the same, the file name gets changed. And you'll see how that works. So let's come over here and extend from Asset Modification Processor. Um, the main thing you need to take notice is it says this is obsolete. And this is true, but only for Unity Engine, that Asset Modification Processor. There's actually two different ones one inside the editor namespace and one inside the engine namespace. We want to use the one in the editor namespace. Next, we want to implement this all on will move asset static function. And here's an example. Uh, thanks to Ryder, I can just do this and it will implement it for me. Um, now we do have to return this asset move result. And this is a bit confusing if you look at the documentation, but basically this what we return here is what we did so if we moved the asset we would re return did move if we had an error moving it we would replay return failed move and if we um, didn't move it we'll return did not move and then unity will proceed to move uh, proceed to move the asset using its own built-in systems give me one second So, once you have this implemented, um, there's not really that much code. Mainly, we just need to check and make sure we're working on the asset that we intend to work on. So, in this case, I'm going to create an asset, or sorry, achieve, achievement database variable. And I'm basically going to use the asset database to load the main asset at our source path. And I'm going to cast it as the achievement database. So a couple of things to note here. First, I'm using load main asset. That way, we're not accidentally loading one of the sub assets. Um, because the sub assets are also stored at the exact same path. And then I'm also casting it as an achievement database using as. This way, we'll get a null if it's not an achievement database. Or get an actual achievement database. Which allows us then to check if this is null we don't want to do anything uh, because this does not pertain to us this is some other game object or asset that's being modified and again this will be called for all assets in the editor next we want to check and make sure we're actually doing the renaming part not just the uh, not moving an asset from one folder to the other and this can be done pretty simply if we just use source there equals uh, I'm sorry, if we just use the C-sharp system.io paths, we can get 
directory name from our source path, right? And same thing for our destination path, or destination directory, I should say. Once we got those, we can simply compare if uh, the source directory equals to the destination directory, um, or if they don't equal, I should say, then again, it doesn't pertain to us. Uh, one note, the source path and destination path actually include the asset name and extension. So that's the reason we have to get just the directory name. So if we get to this point, we know we are uh, now trying to rename the asset. And all we really have to do is make sure that we update the name of the asset to match the file name. Now we don't have the file name yet, which we but we can get it from um, again using path. We can get the file name, but without the extension from the destination path. So this will give us back what we're trying to rename the asset to, and all we're gonna do is update the asset's name to match that. And doing this fixes the renaming bug. So if we save this. Go back to Unity, come back here, let's create a new achievement database, create a couple of achievements, and if we rename this, this should work just fine, no problems. Uh, it works. Now, this we're not quite done yet, because if I was to duplicate this right now, as you can see, this breaks again, and mainly because Unity um, updates the asset name again, but the actual database's name no longer matches. So it creates this weird funky thing. And we can fix that with a little, not really a hack, but if we go back to our main asset database script and inside of um, awake, so we can create a protected virtual avoid awake in case somebody decides to override this later. And in here we're gonna have to do a little unity if guard that way this is only executed inside the editor and basically we're going to do a very similar thing to this where the name is just going to be our name and the file name is going to be um, using unity editor dot as database get asset path of this right so our asset path is going to equal to this and then we're going to use our asset path uh, to get the file name and then we're going to update our name to that and this is going to run whenever this gets copied right and the first time it's created this will run this will only run in the editor as well so in fact we can actually whoops if we want to be a bit more specific, we can surround this whole thing inside Unity Editor as well. That way none of this gets imported unnecessarily. All right, and if we go back to Unity, let it load real quick. Go back to here, let's delete this one. And now when we duplicate it, as you can see, everything is correct and it's still working and we can still rename stuff alrighty um, I hope this helps some of you saves you some time and if you wanna know how I build this whole database thing let me know have a good one bye bye